here today. I know it can get a little hectic throughout the day, so I appreciate your time. Um, so today we're going to be talking about mental health awareness and focusing on the importance of it um, and really focusing on burnout because I know that is something that we can all relate to. So here's a little introduction, a little bit about myself. So as Maggie said, my name is Ariana. I'm a board certified PA. I currently practice at the University of Utah Neuropsychiatric Institute. I work on an acute crisis stabilization unit. So in this role, I have the privilege of taking care of patients from many diverse backgrounds with all kinds of different psychiatric conditions. Um, I manage everything from suicidal ideation, anxiety, depression, acute psychosis, substance abuse withdrawal, and really we just are there to provide a safe environment if need be. So I have a huge passion for mental health and I spend a lot of my time outside of work involved in advocacy projects. So my goal is to help educate others around me, really emphasize the importance of mental health because it is so important right now. Um, another huge goal of mine is to promote destigmatization um, because that is also another concern today in the society that we live in. Um, so you guys will have access to this PowerPoint afterwards. So no worries, no stress. Um, don't feel like you need to like write notes on anything that you may find interesting. You'll have access to this. Also, Maggie is going to be monitoring the chat for me. Um, I am still new to Zoom. Unfortunately, I have been working in the hospital and I have not had to transition, transition to Zoom yet. So um, bear with me with technical difficulties if we have any. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys and let's get started unless you guys have any questions right now. Okay. All right. So first, let's talk about your positions working within real estate and the correlation or impact it may be have on and maybe having on your mental health, especially right now. So if you look at this figure right here, um, and you may be surprised by this, you may not be. Um, this was put out in a research study, and real estate is currently ranked number two for the highest profession associated with depression. So you will see that it's right under public and private transportation, and right above social services. So as you know, I work in healthcare. Um, however, I can only imagine the toll that this career may take not only on you guys, um, but also your support team. So some examples you know, that came to my mind that you may be experiencing within your field of work um, or things you may experience with your job included you know, some of these right here. So I would imagine it's very demanding, stressful. You guys work very long hours. It's probably very competitive. You have to be happy, charismatic, upbeat. You know, that's very exhausting after a while. You know, um, you have to manage all types of clients and also their emotions. And also income is dependent on sales. So my goals for this presentation are a few things. So the first is to help bring awareness regarding mental health. Two, I wanna address the impact this challenging year has had on each of us and then provide you with some tools and resources to help get you through the remainder month and a half because we never know what's coming with 2020. And then three, I also want to provide some encouragement and motivation for you guys. So you guys, what is mental health? Mental health is our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. And it affects how we think, how we feel, and how we act. And it helps determine how we handle stress and how we can relate to others and how we ultimately make choices. Okay, so who does mental health affect? I think oftentimes we think you know, there's a certain type of individual that is only affected by mental health. But the truth is, plain and simple, everyone, everyone watching this, everyone in the entire world is affected by mental health. You know, every single individual is going to experience a mental health related complaint at some point in their life. And the bottom line, mental health does not discriminate. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when someone is going to be dealing with a mental health related concern. Okay, so the next slide is kind of a lot. Um, how has our mental health been affected by today's current events? So this slide that we're gonna dive into may provoke a lot of emotions 
because the truth is this year has been incredibly tough for every single one of us. And as a realtor, you already experience, you know, tremendous amounts of pressure and stress just in your career alone. And then you add in personal life, you add in 2020 with all of the detrimental and enormous challenges it has brought. And it is a lot to process and handle. So you know, honestly, maybe you're not handling it. There could be that option too. And that is okay. I want you to know that, that is okay. And we're going to talk more about this. So this picture right here, um, it's a little bit sad, but also it can be hopeful if you look at it. It reminded me of what parts of this year have felt like for each of them. And it has been really difficult. So I've listed off some big examples that came to my mind um, regarding this year and how it's affected us, but your list might be a little bit different. So we've been dealing with this global pandemic since early March, and that in itself has just been all over the place. You know, new regulations, new changes, new guidelines, that, that has been very, very tough. You know, we've been dealing with protests, um, with racial inequity, injustice. There have been changes in the education system. You know, you may be homeschooling your children. You may be having to alter your schedule because you have to help homeschool um, if your kids are partially online or if they're doing half online, half in person. Employment has been very challenging. There have been layoffs. There have been furloughs. You know, you guys have all been, as Maggie had mentioned, you have been learning how how to navigate um, through Zoom calls and doing a lot of this virtually. And that's a change in itself. You know, we've all been socially isolated. We haven't been able to really connect with our people. And, you know, that is a huge shift in our daily routine. You know, we're not able to openly travel like we used to. We're missing, you know, those weddings, baby showers, any type of really important um, celebratory event that used to bring unity in our lives that is kind of put on pause right now. So big drastic changes to our environments are rapidly occurring and it, it just seems like it's a consistent thing over and over. Okay, so next slide. So now we're gonna talk about the stigma in mental health. So with this, I feel that society has continually put us down for being open with mental health related concerns, whether that be anxiety, depression, substance abuse, you know, we are often ostracized or perceived as weak or attention seeking or drug or motive seeking. And in reality, mental illness is a medical condition, you guys. Mental illness should not be treated any differently than a heart condition or a broken bone. All conditions require attention, patience, understanding, and that patient-centered treatment plan. So one of the most important things I like to remind my patients, my family members, my friends, anyone, is that no matter what an individual is dealing with, they are not their diagnosis. You know, a person is simply battling anxiety or depression or, you know, stress, whatever it is. Bottom line, labels and stigmas hurt. Um, and that's where we go wrong in our society nowadays when people are trying to be open and seek out mental health services. So what can one experience when mental health is declining, when it's unstable, or when someone is being provoked by life circumstances? So I've just listed a bunch here on the side, and I'll kind of read off a few, but you know, you may be experiencing fear, worry, anxiety. You may not be able to sleep. You may feel restless, you know, hopeless, very sad. You may be having panic attacks, guilt, obsessive thoughts. You may be irritable and angry with people around you um, and your moods may be fluctuating here and there. Um, you may also isolate and just want to stay in your basement or stay in a dark room all day and never come out. And, the, and it may even evolve to the point of, you know, wanting to self-harm or be having suicidal thoughts. So everyone copes differently. Everyone's threshold for what they can tolerate and how they manage is very different. You know, the feelings we talked about on 
applied are very, very normal. So if you are experiencing those, I don't want you to think that there's something wrong with you because they're not. So the question is, when should a person consider seeking out help and treatment? And when is it too far? You know, when, when have I let it gone, go too far that, you know, I should have, I should have already reached out to someone. So I want to list off some warning signs to kind of watch out for, um, maybe for yourself or for others around you that, that are important to you. So if, if someone is not physically taking care of themselves, we begin to worry about that. Maybe they have stopped showering for a week. You know, they're just not doing anything to promote physical hygiene. That's a little bit of a red flag. You know, they're not showing up for important obligations or responsibilities. They're not showing up for work. They're not answering, you know, important phone calls. Their email, their emails are overflowing. I mean, our emails are all overflowing right now, but you know, you're purposely ignoring things. Um, you're having those passive or active suicidal thoughts you're potentially abusing substances, or maybe you're engaging in type of in a type of behavior um, just to kind of cope and block out that stress that you're dealing with. You know, you just are doing anything to avoid that so you don't have to be alone with your thoughts. And I know that can be scary at times if we have a lot going on. Sometimes we just want to be distracted. So, you know, also, maybe someone would just like to seek out therapy, and that's okay too. You don't have to be going through a crisis. You don't have to be having suicidal thoughts. You don't need to be depressed to seek out therapy. Therapy is very normal, and honestly, it's a great thing to have in your life just at baseline as well. So this next part I'm going to talk about, I have definitely been guilty of this, um, especially this year, um, working in a hospital setting. It's been very chaotic, but when you're placed in a stressful and demanding environment, you learn to adapt. The unbearable stress, the pressure, the guilt, it becomes your new normal. Well, and this can become pretty problematic because you reach that point when you're either unfazed or it's just so much and it all comes back and the monster unleashes itself, if you will. So you don't want to reach that point where you end up in a place that you never intended to be in. So as I've kind of mentioned a little bit here and there, it's never too early to seek out mental health help. And there never needs to be a specific reason as to why you're doing it. You don't need to explain it to anyone else. You know, this is for you and your needs. And so that you can, you know, process what you're going through and, and live the best life that you deserve to live. Okay, so as we move through these next slides, I want to discuss some options to help you work through those stressful, high anxiety driven times, the times you're feeling unmotivated, sad, or maybe you're just having a really difficult day and you've had enough. So the first slide, let's talk about meditation apps. So these are some ones that I have gathered. Um, I've had feedback from a lot of individuals that they are good. I've personally tried out Headspace and that's pretty calming when I'm trying to go to sleep at night. So Headspace, Calm, Insight Timer. Um, I've heard a lot of really great things about simple habits. Um, and when in doubt, you can just go onto YouTube and Google, you know, calming meditation sounds or, you know, breathing exercises, things like that. So next, we're going to talk about coping skills. So you guys, what is a coping skill? Um, why do we care about it? So these are skills to help you tolerate and minimize and really deal with those stressful situations. So you may already be utilizing many of these techniques that are listed on these slides, um, but I just wanted to give you some examples. So um, on the left, which maybe you're right because technology, <laughs> you have exercise, you can write in a journal, draw, listen to music, you can take a bath, you know, engage in your favorite hobby. If you like to cook, you can cook, you can exercise, really doing anything to promote that self-care. Um, music is also a great option to kind of just help you pause for the moment. And then some problem-focused problem examples, working on managing your time better, you know, establishing healthy boundaries between you and other individuals, 
walking away from a situation that's causing you know, havoc in your life or just creating a to-do list. Um, some people like to do it electronically on their phones. I am that person that has sticky notes all over my walls and people can't stand that about me, but whatever works for you. you know, If you need to cross that off, do that as well. Whatever can bring more clarity and calmness into your life. So after, you know, discussing these coping skills with you, I want you to just take a few seconds and either think or write down some ways that you could um, implement some coping skills. You know, what's enjoyable to you? What do you think could be effective for you if you need to take, take a moment to just kind of zone out from the world? Okay. So if you thought a few, thought of a few, that's great. Um, just keep them in your back pocket for when you might need them now. Since we all know 2020 is having a great time with us. Maggie and I were talking about how it's it's kind of been like Jumanji this year. I'm not ready for the final chapter. <laughs> okay, so the next technique we have for those really tough times are called grounding exercises. You may or may not be familiar with these. So grounding exercises are things that you can do to really bring yourself into contact with the present moment if you're feeling similar before. So overwhelmed, stressed, you just need a minute. These can be quick strategies like taking three deep, really big belly breaths or longer, or you can make them a little bit more formal like meditation. So you can use the 54321 method um, or some other ones listed on this side. So I like the five, four, three, two, one method. So what you do is, you know, you're sitting or you're standing wherever you're, you're just taking a moment away and you list off in your head, five things you can see. So you're just taking that all in around you. And then four things that you can feel, three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell and one thing that you may taste. So that's a way to just take that moment. Um, so you're also able to, you know, pretty much do all kinds of other exercises. I've listed a few here um, that may be a little bit more creative. Um, you can hold a piece of ice. You can go into the bathroom. You know, I know you guys are busy. You're trying to sell these houses. If, if it's just too much, you can step into that bathroom. If there's one running water, splash some water on your face, you know, put that music on like we talked about. You, know, you could sip on your favorite beverage if that may be coffee or soda or wine or whatever. You know, just really take that moment to enjoy and, and enjoy that taste. Um, you can wrap yourself in a blanket tightly, or they have these fancy anxiety blankets you can purchase online. They're um, weighted blankets. There's like a 20 pound option, and then they kind of go up from there just to kind of help you feel that calmness. So something I like to do when I'm feeling overwhelmed and stressed is I like to think of my happy place. My happy place is anything to do with fall in New England. I'm from Utah, but I absolutely love New England and the fall, the fall time. So that's where I go when I need to ground myself. So mindfulness exercises. There is a lot of research out there as to why and how mindfulness can be beneficial. So mindfulness techniques actually lower your blood pressure and this decreases your overall risk for heart disease. So we want those healthy hearts. It decreases your stress levels, you know, and stress can have a very huge impact negatively on your body for a few reasons. You know, it can disrupt your immune system, your sleeping patterns, changes in your sex drive. It can make your muscles very tense, very tight. You can feel overall fatigued and just worn out. And, you know, in implementing these mindfulness activities can really increase your clarity and thinking and help you become more aware. So I have also listed on this slide some different mindfulness exercises you can do, um, and you will have access to this PowerPoint, so if you ever need it. So there's the breath, the body scan, object meditation, mindful eating, walking meditation, and, and these are just a few. There are so many more online if you decide you like doing mindfulness exercises.
So now we're actually going to take a few minutes to try out a few of these exercises that we've talked about. These can be very useful if you just need to step away, you know, go into that closet or a bathroom, wherever you need to go, just for that time being to escape. These are for those really stress, very stressful times, the times where you're in panic or, you know, maybe someone is honestly just irritating you so much and you need to just step away before you do something that you're not intending to do. So first we're gonna do a breath focused exercise. Um, when deep breathing is focused and slow, it can really help reduce your anxiety. You can do this technique by sitting, lying in a quiet space or anywhere comfortable for you. So what I want you guys to do is find a space where you can get comfortable and relax. You can stay in your chairs, you can lay on the ground since a lot of your cameras are off, you can turn your cameras off and just pretend you're doing it. Honestly, whatever you would prefer to do for the next few minutes. So just take a second and get comfortable and we'll start. Okay, now that you're comfortable, I'm gonna have you guys start by taking a breath in and out just like normal. So as you're doing this, I want you to notice how it feels when you inhale and exhale normally. Good. So next I want you guys to mentally scan your body from the top down and just check in with yourself. You know, you might feel tension, your body might feel heavy, you might feel some things that you didn't notice as you were sitting through this video call. So just do a nice scan, check in with yourself. So now I want you to take a slow, deep breath through your nose. Notice your belly and your upper body expanding, trying to fill up those lungs and then exhale in whatever way is most comfortable for you. And you guys can sigh if you wish, just let all of that air out. So we're gonna do this for a few minutes. I want you guys to pay close attention to the rise and fall of your stomach and focus on that breath in and out. And while we're doing this, I want you to choose a word to focus on and that word can either be like safe or calm, whatever brings you peace. So imagine your inhale washing over you like a gentle wave and imagine your exhale carrying out all that negative energy, all the upsetting thoughts, anything that may be weighing you down today. Just exhale it all out. And if you get distracted throughout this, gently bring your attention back to your breath and your words. So. Okay, great, you guys. So while you're comfortable in your space in this relaxed position, I'm gonna do one more exercise with you. This one is called the body scan. So what I want you to start with is to bring your attention into your body. You guys can close your eyes again if you want, if that's more comfortable for you. So notice your body seated. If you're in a chair, 
or if you're lying on the ground and I want you to feel that weight of your body on the chair or on the floor right now. Just check in with yourself. Do you feel your body, you know, holding tension? Does it feel heavy? Take a few deep breaths in and out. And as you take that breath in, try to fill up your lungs as deep as you can. And as you exhale, just try to think of yourself relaxing with each and every breath you exhale. So notice your feet on the floor. How do they feel? Are they touching the floor? Do they ache? Are they tired? Do they feel hot? Keep taking those deep breaths in and out, just trying to relax. So now shift your focus to your legs against the chair or the ground. Do you feel pressure? Are they pulsing? Do they feel light? And then notice your back against the chair. How does your back feel today? Okay, bring your attention to your stomach area. If it's tight or tense, just let it soften and take a nice deep breath in and out. Good. So next, notice your hands. Are your hands tense or tight today? If they are, just let them soften. And go ahead and notice your arms. Are you feeling any types of sensations in your arms? Are your shoulders tight? If they are, just let them be soft. Take a, deep, a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Next, notice your neck and your throat. Just let them be soft and relax. Soften your jaw. Let your face and your facial muscles just be soft and melt. Release all that tension in, in your jaw. So notice your whole body right now. Take one more breath in and out for me. And be aware of your whole body as best as you can right now. So exhale all of that worry, all of that weight, all of the stress you've been feeling today. And when you're ready, you guys can open your eyes, you can sit back up, I'm just taking that time to slowly come back to the earth. <laughs> All right, good morning, you guys. Hopefully you're feeling okay after that, feeling a little bit better. So taking just a few minutes to really check in with yourself and pause can make a huge difference in how you're feeling throughout the day. All right, we're ready to move forward. Okay, so let's talk about tips on staying motivated. This is a very difficult slide. <laughs> As we all may have been experiencing this year, the motivation is low and it's getting a little bit lower as the months go by. You know, we are feeling very burned out and exhausted. It's, it's very hard to stay motivated. So some ideas for you guys to keep yourself motivated. Um, I've included on this page. So creating a routine, no matter how small or how big, you know, following that routine, whatever it may be every single day. Um, if you're wondering why it says daily habit tracker, I have emailed a little habit tracker for Maggie to send out to you guys. Um, it's just something you can put a little check mark by. Um, or if you want something a little more fancy, you can make your own, you can do one, you know, on your phone, something like that. 
um, just because it does feel nice to stay accountable and, and cross that off as you move forward in the day. You can set a timer with an allotted amount of time to think or do whatever you want to do. Um, I find myself getting lost on social media, which also makes me super annoyed and anxious at times. So setting that timer and saying, I'm going to give myself 10 minutes or half an hour to be on the internet or watch TV, or, you know, if you are upset about something that happened in work at work today or in your personal life and, you know, it's out of your control, just saying, okay, I'm going to give myself five minutes. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to sulk. I'm going to be angry. And then when the timer has gone off, it's time to move forward. So hold yourself accountable with a checklist or get a buddy and make it a team effort. Um, everything is easier if you have someone helping you stay accountable. Send that morning text, send that night text, say, hey, I did this today, or I actually didn't get to this today, but I'm just checking in with you. How are you doing? You know, reward yourself for accomplishing tasks you have set out for yourself. It doesn't have to be some giant task. You don't need to say, okay, I need to go run a marathon tomorrow. Like you can even start by, you know, I took five minutes for myself today. I think that that sounds like a lot, but honestly, with your types of schedules and your job, maybe taking five minutes isn't as doable as it sounds. So you can start small and build up. They all count and they're all important. So you guys, some days are not going to go as planned and that does not make you any less of an individual. Maybe you need to just lay in bed. Maybe you need to skip that workout. Maybe you need to indulge in those extra treats or that comfort food that you weren't planning for. It's okay. It's okay and it's important to be flexible. It's okay to not be your best self 100% every day. You know, your best self and the best version of yourself is gonna look different from time to time, especially given today's circumstances. You know, you're not the same individual that you were a month ago six months ago, um, or even last year, you know, so it's very important that we do our best to stay kind to ourselves and evolve with the circumstances that we are presented with. So physical health and how it impacts our mental health. I like to remind people how closely these two are related because they really do have a huge effect on one another. You know, your mental health is going to affect how you feel physically and how you feel physically is going to affect how you feel emotionally. So some ideas to put your health first are shown on this slide. You know, some of these may seem pretty straightforward, but sometimes it's really easy to forget and do these things and make them a priority. I am also guilty of, of not doing all the things that I should be doing. But like I said, we're all human. It doesn't matter if you work in healthcare, you know, if you work in real estate, it doesn't matter. Um, everyone manages things differently and that's okay. So like we talked about following a routine, you know, setting an alarm, repeating daily patterns because we are creatures of habit and we really like that sense of familiarity keeping a clean and organized home environment, it's a lot easier to feel calm when things are clean around you. Whereas if they're a little bit scattered and clustered, um, it's much easier to become a little bit anxious. So keep your workouts going um, if you are doing workouts. If you're not, you can start small by taking a little walk outside, you know, baby steps, that's okay. You know, you can take that walk around the neighborhood. You can do body weight exercises. I know that a lot of us don't feel comfortable quite yet going back to the gym. Maybe some of us do. Um, so finding that happy medium, you can do a lot in your home. You can do a lot in a teeny tiny space. Um, and get creative. You know, you can Google things, you can YouTube exercises. There are so many apps out there um, begging to take our money so that we stay in shape. Plenty of things. So try to stick to a meal schedule and stay hydrated. I know that sounds easy as well, but remembering to eat or drink when you can. You guys are probably on the go all the time and you probably forget to eat and drink, to be honest. So you can set that alarm or if you're familiar with the My Fitness Pal app, you can actually log your water and your food. So this last one kind of drives me crazy, but you know, consuming a well-balanced diet. I think they start teaching us this when we are, you know, in kindergarten. You know, eat your vegetables, eat your chicken, eat your protein, eat your vegetable protein, whatever. Um, but it's so true. You know, as long as we like do our best to take a couple things here and there, it really can influence how, you know, we feel during the day. You know, having long sustained energy 
things like that. So do your best to limit those processed and sugary foods, but you don't need to cut them out. Like it's important to still indulge and have things that make you happy. Nobody wants to just eat plain broccoli and chicken and rice every day. Some people do. I personally can't do it, but don't feel like you have to just do that. Okay, so continuing to talk about this, you know, take care of your mental health, you guys. Everything we've been talking about, it's so crucial, especially at a time like this. Giving yourself breaks from the news, especially right now, you know, as the news, social media, you know, it's all pretty overwhelming at times. You know, implementing meditation, you can do some of the things we talked about, actually implement some of the exercises that we did. Engaging in those activities that really help you decompress and feel happy again, because I think a lot of us have lost our spark. We don't feel happy anymore. We feel like robots just going through life and, and waiting for this year to be over with, you know? So getting adequate sleep, that's also probably a challenge for you guys. I can relate to that as well, but we like to aim for eight hours. Is that a possibility all the time? No especially if you have children, probably not, or pets, you know, sleeping affects everything. It affects your mood, your appetite, your cognition, your energy. It, it really does affect everything. And it can have some pretty negative um, consequences long-term if we are avoiding sleeping every night. So some tips for trying to help you sleep better, making sure your bedroom is dark and quiet. You can have blackout curtains. I have those in my room. They're pretty helpful. Making sure that um, the room is nice. -wise. So if you like it cool, not too hot, just kind of in the middle. Um, having a snack before bed can help, it, assuming you don't have heartburn and things like that, because that just might make you feel sick and you'll be up all night long. Um, avoiding caffeine before bedtime and then going to bed each night at the same time, if, if possible. Um, it all just kind of comes down to routine and helping your body get in the motion of things. And also the last thing is try to avoid electronics while in bed. So phones, TVs, anything with that blue light, because that dysregulates, you know, our sleeping patterns. And then it, our body thinks it's time to wake up. And so you may be struggling to fall asleep. But like I said, it's easier to say these things than actually do them. So I can relate to that. So you guys, um, mental health matters. It really does. Wrapping up with a couple of these slides, as you can see, advocating on the importance of mental health is very important to me. You know, I see so many individuals out there hurting, you know, they're feeling ashamed. They're really spiraling down because of what they are feeling and what they're experiencing. So if you find yourself in this position, I want you to focus on the things that you can control. And that is very hard rather than the things you cannot control. Don't discredit how you are feeling or compare yourself to others. You know, it's easy to think, well, my problems are not that relevant because this person is going through so much more of a difficult time. You know, it doesn't matter how small or big, like it's all important and it's all valid. You know, your feelings are valid and you are allowed to feel this way. So you don't need to just brush them under the carpet and keep moving on. Everyone is experiencing something different and something unique and everyone's going to cope differently. So make sure to acknowledge your thoughts and your feelings and then work through them. Like I said, it's easy to just forget they even exist, but eventually they're probably going to come back to you. So take that time to mentally check in with yourself and see how you're doing. And, you know, most importantly, be kind to yourself. And that's also been hard this year. You know, this stigma, this stigma and judgment that floats around regarding mental health, that has nothing to do with you. And it has everything to do with our society. You know, our society has led us to believe that there was ever anything wrong with being open and honest regarding how we feel and seeking out help to better our lives and feel happy again, because everyone deserves to be happy. And like I mentioned this year, you know, everything about 2020 has really tested us and it seems to keep doing so. So take that time off, turn off your phone, limit social media, limit the news, set those boundaries with people that you may feel are weighing you down. It's okay to do that. Make yourself, make your needs a priority. Seek out mental health services. You know, take time to process what you are experiencing 
through therapy. You know, if you take um, some type of medication for your mood, that is okay too. Take the medication. There is nothing wrong with that. Reach out for help if you need to. Do whatever you need to do to make it through this time. And remember, like, it's okay to pause. You're not less of a person. Something else that I feel society has led us to believe is that our worth is correlated to productivity. And that's not true. You guys are still valuable humans and doing great things. And that does not depend on how many sales you make or how many things you accomplish in life. So just remember that. So this is one of my favorite slides. This is my hotlines and resources slides that I put together for you. Um, I tried to do it from a more so national level because I'm here in Utah. Um, but all of these, you know, if you contact one of them, they'll be able to um, direct you to a line in California if that's what you need, if they are not able to help you. They're really good about doing that. So there is always help out there. You know, even when you or someone may feel like you're in your darkest moment and you feel like you're by yourself, there's always someone to turn to. There will always be someone, you know, waiting to um, pick up your call or have that text from you. All of these conversations remain confidential and free. And just to reiterate again and again, you are not weak for seeking help ever. You know, it's, it's very brave and it's courageous to put your needs first. So send that text, make that call, do whatever you have to do. And please don't be embarrassed. This is all very normal. So, you know, over here, depending on what you feel um, is your greatest need and what suits your lifestyle, um, there are plenty of resources for you guys. Um, so you can hold on to that for if you ever need it or if someone you love may ever need it. So right now, um, I just want to see if you guys have any questions for me about the presentation, about mental health, uh, about resources. Um, I'm happy to answer anything and everything you may have. I don't see anything in the chat box, but Ariana, great presentation. Awesome. And those, uh, uh, what is it called? The activities that you made us do. I mean, sometimes we just need that little, you know, two minute break and just learn how to breathe again. Cause I think we, we forget that, especially right now. So thank you for that. Sure. I think it was great. Awesome. I'm going to just put my contact information up here too for you guys you know if you decide you want to ask me a question and privately too you know you can send me an email i'm very active on my medical social media page i post a lot of mental health advocacy related things too so if you want you can give me a follow or you can message me there and um, or you can email me too um so maggie will have some things for you guys to send over to you later today or whenever it is at her earliest convenience um and I just want to say thank you guys for staying here with me and listening to this um, because mental health, it really does matter. And it's so important. And, you know, I think, like I said, it's very easy to be embarrassed and feel like it's a problem, but really it's not, it's very normal. So just know that you guys are never alone and there's always support and somebody out there who cares and someone who's caring for you.